Hold up, let's break this down. Stunt driver Tanner Faust is up front drifting the blue G70. Another driver chases him at speed, just a few feet behind, trailing that guy. He's a $500,000 camera car trying to get the lens as close as possible for the perfect shot. All the while, another driver is backing up this truck, hitting his mark at precisely the right time as to not hit the other drivers, but also to be close enough to sell the shot. If any mark is misjudged, any cue mistimed at best, the shot is lame, but at worst, all four of these cars could end up smashing into each other. And right off screen over here is the man in charge of making sure everything goes according to plan. In fact, he made the plan. You could say he's the man with the plan and I can, so I will. This is Robert Nagel, the man with the plan and one of the best automotive stunt coordinators working in the film industry today. I'm just making sure I have all my bases covered, what we're doing next, what are the next five shots, what are the next five pieces of action. In this video, we're gonna show you how he took this and turned it into this. And at the end, we're gonna show you the final stunt. Cut, cut, cut together in a different aspect ratio with cooler colors starring Big Bro. This is how to stunt. We're gonna show you step by step exactly how Rob orchestrates these dope-tastic stunts. But first, let me tell you how we got to make these things in the first place. Everyone at Donut loves two things, cars and movies. So when Genesis came to us and they were like, hey, do you guys have any big ideas for the release of our new G70? At first we were like, boom, up to speed, let's do it. And they were like, please stop pitching that show to us. You're way too sweaty and you make people uncomfortable. <coughs> and we were like, hmm, right. No, that's a good note. What if we recreate some of the movie stunts that made us fall in love with both cars and movies? Movies like The Fast and the Furious, Drive, Gone in 60 Seconds, Baby Driver. And they said, okay. Now I'm gonna be honest, full transparency. I don't know why they said okay, but they did. And we had to make it happen. Speaking of Baby Driver, Robert, the guy from before, was the stunt coordinator for that. That alleyway backwards entry, yeah, Robert. He's worked on a ton of other movies too. Black Panther, Spider-Man, Fate of the Furious, John Wick, both of them. Captain America, both of them. Mission Impossible, Furious 7, Nightcrawler, Fast and Furious 6, Jack Reacher, both of them. Dark Knight Rises, Transformers, Drive, Fast 5, The Hangover, Talladega Nights. So I think you could say that this guy has a pretty cool resume, but what does a stunt coordinator actually do? A stunt coordinator on set has a tricky job because they do have to take that vibe or story or feel that the script or the director has and somehow pump in a reality check of what really is physically possible and then translate that to the stunt player, the driver or whatever. Turns out a lot. So we're breaking today's stunt down into four parts to help explain exactly what guys like Robert do. Part one, know the stunt. Before he can make any decisions, Robert has to know what the stunt is even supposed to be. In this case, we're doing what's called threading the needle. So this is a car chase, right? And all three of these stunts in this series are gonna add up to one chase. Today's stunt is one that you've probably seen in a ton of different movies. The good guy, which is me, Abby, is flying down the street looking handsome. And the bad guy is in hot pursuit. He's mad at the good guy because he's so handsome and smart. We approach a sharp turn. Oh no! There's a truck backing up. The gap is getting smaller and smaller. I, or technically Tanner, the stunt driver, has just enough room to kick the back end out and drift around the bend. But the gap keeps closing, so the bad guy has to continue straight, losing momentum in the turn. Pretty sick, but you might be thinking, hey, with a bit of warm up on the skid pad, I bet I could probably go out and do that. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And that might be true, but could you do it in a brand new car that you have to give back and only driven once at a location you've only seen once with cameras rolling, a bunch of people watching and nail multiple takes exactly the same all within 30 minutes before this street you're paying a bajillion dollars for opens back up again to rush hour traffic? When you think about it that way, it's not that easy. Part two, know the vision. 
so we know logistically more or less what the stunt is. But we're not just doing a stunt, we're shooting a stunt. So we have a director, and the director, in this case, Ben Conrad, we'll do a video on him next, has a vision for this stunt. Is it fast and aggressive? Is it silly and comedic? Is it super flowy and stylish? That's up to Ben. And Robert needs to understand what Ben is going for. They are constantly in communication, going through shots together, reviewing storyboards together, and coming up with solutions on the fly. Part three, know the tool. Once Robert knows Ben's goal for the scene, he has to understand what tools he has to turn it into a reality. What's the location? What's the time frame? How long do they have for each shot? And finally, what are the capabilities of the car? Ben wants the G70 to drift around the corner. Well, Robert wants to make that as easy and safe as possible for Tanner, the driver. So he turned off traction control, stability control, disabled the ABS, and added a hydraulic handbrake. Now, when you turn off all those safety features, you have to make sure that the car still behaves in a controlled, safe manner. So you go out and test the car. Who tested our G70s? The drivers, right? Wrong! Frickin' Rob did! He drifted the car! He did 180s! He's one of the coolest guys ever! What got you into this? Ran out of money racing. The guy pushes the car to its limits because his job is to know where those limits are. After all, the drivers are trusting Rob with their lives. When Rob says the car isn't gonna try and correct itself when it loses traction, the driver trusts him. When Rob says the truck won't back out past its mark when the driver drifts past it, the driver trusts him. Which brings us to our final step, part four know the moves. So he knows the stunt, he knows the vision, and he knows the materials he has to work with. All he has left to do is tell everyone what to do. All right, so like I said, these two cars are chasing each other down the street, and this truck is closing the gap. Now Jim, the guy who's driving the truck, has two marks to hit. He has one for when Tanner gets there, and a second one for when Rich gets there but he needs to make sure he's moving as smooth as possible so it looks like one continuous motion. Jim's been given instructions of where he can and can't be at a given moment, um, and so it's up to him to kind of fill those gaps and get to that point and make it look as smooth as possible. If he's all like, uh, 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 it looks like we're all in cahoots, the whole stunt is <laughs> Meanwhile, Tanner, who's driving the blue car, needs to keep an eye on Jim to make sure that he gets to the gap at just the right time. And Rich, in the white car, needs to keep the distance between him and Tanner short enough to make the chase exciting, but long enough to give Jim enough time to hit his second mark. The whole time, Rob will be watching and giving feedback to the drivers while also taking notes from Ben to maintain the emotion and framing Ben wants. Think of him like a translator. He has to understand the driver's language and the director's language. If it were up to Ben, Tanner's car would be a millimeter away from the truck. If it were up to Tanner, there wouldn't be a big camera hanging out of the trunk of his car for half the take. It's a pretty stressful job, but despite that, Rob is one of the chillest dudes I have ever come into contact with. He's got this super calm Mr. Miyagi thing going on, and it's downright soothing to watch the man work. There we go, ready? And three, two, one, action, action. It's like a cup of tea. And if Rob and everyone else on set does their job right, you should end up with a pretty cool stunt like this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing before you show the final complete video. I want to let you in on a little secret. I'm not the one driving the car in this video. Guess who is? Rob. Well, he's not driving the G70, he's driving this thing. It's called the Biscuit Rig, and he invented it. He won an Oscar for it. It's powered by a 650 horsepower V8. It's got airbag suspension. It's totally modular. You can put the driver in the front, you can put the driver in the back. Robert created it so jamokes like me can do really cool stuff like this. Okay, now we can show it. episode of How to Stunt 
Watch last week's episode here. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse. If you don't want to miss anything in the future, hit that subscribe button. If you like this, let us know by hitting that like button. Uh, how did you get into cars? For me, it was movies, car chases. That's my thing. Let me know how you got into them down in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut at Donut Media. We love you.